Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll be learning how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Before we start, it would be helpful if you had a pencil, some scratch paper, an eraser, and maybe a partner to help you during partner talk. But if you don't have anybody, it's totally fine to just talk to yourself. And don't forget, you can always pause the video and go back to parts of the video that you want to review. So to start, what if I told you that what you already know about adding unlike fractions can help you with subtracting unlike fractions? What step in adding unlike fractions do you think would be the most helpful when it comes to subtracting? So think about that for a second and keep that thought in your head. For me, if I were to answer, I would say that finding the common denominator would be the most helpful. Since I did that with adding, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do that when I'm subtracting unlike fractions. Today, our objective is that we're actually going to be learning how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Take a minute to just rate yourself and think about how you feel before we start the lesson. Do you totally understand and can teach your peers level four or are you at a level one, or maybe you're somewhere in between? Our goal is to make sure that your level of understanding will increase as we go through the lesson. So let's review when we're subtracting fractions with common denominators or like denominators, then all we have to do is subtract across the top with the numerators. So three minus two equals one, and my denominator stays the same. I also want to review with you finding multiples in factors and using prime factorization. We can make organized lists, we can use a factor tree, or we can just write out multiples of numbers to look for those common multiples. This is something that we did in our previous lesson, just gonna grab a pen here, um, where we found common denominators when we were adding unlike fractions. We listed out the multiples for both denominators. So here I have three, six, nine, and 12. And for four, I have four, eight, and 12. And I can see here that I have 12 in common. So I would write these fractions here vertically and show and kind of change the denominators to both 12. How did I get from three to 12? I multiplied by four. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. One times four is four. How did I get from four to 12? I multiplied by three. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. One times three is three. Now I can add those two numerators and I'll have seven twelfths. Seven twelfths cannot be simplified. So one third plus one fourth is seven twelfths. So this strategy is what we'll be using for today's lesson. Um, something else that we talked about in the adding unlike fractions was that we could multiply both denominators to get a common denominator, but it won't always be the least common denominator. So keep that in mind. If you use this strategy, you might have to simplify in the end. All right. A big idea I want us to remember is that the least common denominator is the smallest number on the bottom of the fraction. When we are given unlike fractions, we have, we have different denominators and we can find the LCD to make like fractions. So this is a sample from our adding unlike fractions lesson. Our success criteria is a little bit different for this lesson since we've learned a little bit more. Um, with adding unlike fractions. We can still find equivalent fractions or like fractions. We can use our math facts to find the least common denominator. And now I can add fractions with unlike denominators, which will be helpful with subtracting. So let's get started. I am during our model, so let's just watch and look for the steps and then you'll be able to try in just a few short minutes. So I have seven eighths and three fourths. I'm going to find a common um, denominator by writing out some of my multiples. So I'm going to start 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24. I'll stop there. I'll write these out for 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. How perfect. I can stop right there because I have 8 in common, which means that 7 eighths gets to stay the same. I do have to change this one to an eight. How did I get from four to eight? I multiplied by two, one, two. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Three times two is six. So now I can subtract seven eighths minus six eighths. 
keep the denominator the same. Seven minus six is one. So my answer is one eighth. I'll go through my steps with you. For today's lesson, we'll be finding the least common denominator, multiplying to find those equivalent fractions. We'll subtract the fractions across the numerators and simplify if needed. Now let's take a look at one more example. I'm going to write out 2 and 6. My multiples for 2 are 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6, which is absolutely perfect because those are in common, which means my 1 6 can stay the same. I will change this one to a 6, and um, I have to ask myself, how did I get from 2 to 6? I am multiplied by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. How did I get whatever I do, sorry about that, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. So now I have 3 6 minus 1 6, which is 2 6 because my denominator stays the same. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I still need to simplify this guy. Um, 6 can go into 2 3 times and 2 goes into 2 1. So my answer is 1 third. All right, let's try some together. If you want to pause and go ahead and try on your own, you can, or you can stick with me and we can do it together. Okay, so I want to write out my multiples, 7 and 14. 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, which is perfect. I can just use these two here. My 2 fourteenths is going to stay the same. I'm going to change this 7 to a 14. How did I get from 7 to 14? I multiplied by 2, so that means I have to do that to the top. 3 times 2 is 6. Now I can subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4. Keep the same denominator, 14. This can be simplified. 4 can go into 2 2 times, and 14 can go into 2 7 times. So my answer is 7 twelfths. I want to take a minute to just do some math talk right now before we continue. Um, I want you to go ahead and use one of these sentence frames to explain how you solved the problem and what you did um, in order to use common denominators. Once you're done, you can go ahead and unpause and go to the next question. We're going to go ahead and try this one, 2 fifths minus 6 fifteenths. Just by knowing my facts, I can kind of see here that um, I can actually just change this 5 to a 15, and I can keep this guy the same. How did I get from 5 to 15? I multiplied by 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 3 is 6, so now I have 6 15 Sorry, this fraction was written a little bit funky here. So now I have 6 15 minus 6 15 which is actually just 0. So let's go ahead and take another moment here and use one of our sentence frames to talk about what we did. And if you need more help, it's okay to say that you need more help too. If you want to talk about how you can check your work or if you can make a parallel connection or a comparison to something that you've learned before, that would be really helpful. It's also important to understand why this skill is important. So what might be a way that you might use this skill in the future? All right, let's go ahead and try this one. 7 ninths minus 2 thirds. Again, by knowing my facts, I know I can change this 3 to a 9. How do I get from 3 to 9? 3 times 3 is 9. This guy will stay the same. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 3 is 6. And now I can subtract across. 7 ninths minus 6 ninths is 1 ninth, and that cannot be simplified. Let's take one more moment and use one of the sentence frames to discuss. Go ahead and pause and explain using those sentence frames how you solved or what you might need more help with or what connections you can make. Now let's go ahead and close our lesson. What was our learning objective today? We're learning how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And go ahead and rate how you feel now. How are you feeling about subtracting fractions with unlike denominators? Hopefully your level of understanding has increased. 
Let's go ahead and do some closure questions and think about subtracting fractions a little bit differently. So Joanna is practicing subtracting with unlike denominators. Did Joanna solve this problem correctly? Explain your thinking. Go ahead and pause and solve and see if she did it correctly. And if you want to, you can write down a little explanation of, of your thinking and how you solved and what the mistakes were made, or maybe there weren't any mistakes. So go ahead and take a moment, and when you're ready, you can come back and see how I solved it. So by looking at this problem and also knowing my multiplication, I could write out my multiples, but I know that 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to change this denominator to 27. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 3 is 6. So now I have 6 27ths minus 4 27ths, which gives me 2 27ths. So it looks like Joanna did it correctly. She was able to change the denominator and she multiplied by 3 to make it 27. Whatever she did to the bottom, she did to the top. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. So I would explain what Joanna did and how she did it correctly by changing the denominator and making sure to change the numerator in the same way. Okay, I'm going to show you one last problem. Is finding 9 tenths minus 1 half the same as finding 9 tenths minus 1 fourth minus 1 fourth? Explain your thinking. So go ahead and pause and take a moment to solve, and then come back and check your work. So there's different ways we could solve this. One way would be to actually just solve each problem. So I'm going to do the first one. 9 tenths minus, so I'm going to change this guy, this denominator to a 10 as well by multiplying by 5. So that would change it to a 10. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I would multiply by 5, which would give me a 5. And then my answer would be 4 tenths. And simplified, that would be 2 fifths right okay put that here another way to solve here um, would be by solving this one and I want to think about if I'm subtracting one-fourth minus one-fourth I'm essentially adding one-fourth and one-fourth because I'm subtracting both of these from nine-tenths if I add those, I get 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. So it is the same. 9 tenths minus 1 fourth minus 1 fourth is the same as subtracting 1 half from 9 tenths, because essentially we're adding these fractions together, which would give me 1 half. So my answer would still be 2 fifths. Okay. Well, thank you so much for following along and learning how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. There's some links in the description for you to continue practice. And you can also like and subscribe to see more videos. Thank you so much.